I'm Julie Jacobson with CE Pro Magazine. It's exciting to be here, and I am honored to be here today in this fireside chat. Uh, at the Google and Nest booth at Cedia 2017. And joining me today is Mark Spates. He's the head of the smart home for Google. And we have Mike Susi, who is the product strategy lead for Nest. Uh, welcome to you both. Why don't you give me just a brief description of, of what you two do at Nest and Google? Great. Julie, it's good to be here. Thanks for having us. And I look forward to a fun conversation today. Uh, so Mike Susi, uh, product strategy lead for Nest. And my primary role is to kind of look forward uh, how our products are, are going to be working together, what APIs partners are going to need, and kind of work with our teams on, on kind of product roadmap looking forward. Thanks for having me, Julie, and I'm uh, really excited to be here with Mike. We have these conversations all the time in, in, in private, but I'm excited that we can share some of the things that we talk about and we're really passionate about with the, with the pro audience. So I'm Mark Spates. I head up the smart home uh, across Google and that includes the Google Assistant as well as the hardware. My day-to-day -day is really making sure that we have an amazing experience when people try to control devices in their home. And that is everything from speech to the device connections uh, to roadmap and to ensuring that we work really closely with Nest. All right, thank you. So we're at a trade show, we're at Cedia. Clearly the first thing people ask when they walk into your booth is, what's new and exciting here? Yeah, well, I'm really excited to announce a few different products. Uh, first of all, Nest Thermostat E has just been announced uh, as of last week. Uh, it is our, our more affordable, simple design thermostat that opens up uh, the best of what Nest has to offer on the thermostat marking to a much broader art audience. And so I'm very excited about that product. Um, also in June, we announced uh, the next generation uh, Nest Cam Indoor. It's called Nest Cam Indoor IQ. Um, and some great features around this is, is really around 4K video storage. It also, uh, we've implemented facial recognition. And we've done that through a collaborative effort with Google with a technology called FaceNet. And what that does is allow us to recognize familiar faces in the home uh, and unfamiliar faces. So we add a whole other level of peace of mind. For instance, my kid gets home at 3.30 every day. He's a 14-year-old. And it literally recognizes his face and, and, and sends me an alert that my son's name, Rocco, has, uh, has arrived home safely. On the Google side, uh, we really started up the hardware engine. So just last year, we got into the space uh, and, and kind of dove feet first in. And the, the products that we wanted to make sure that we come and highlight it here, because we haven't really highlighted in the, in the professional space, are things like Google Wi-Fi, which if you think about the smart home, uh, it's critical that you have robust connectivity. And so the new meshing technology that we have on Google Wi-Fi leveraging some of the Google Smarts, machine learning, AI on the back end to make sure we know what nodes are connected, when they're connected, how much connectivity they need is really cool. And we think that's going to be the backbone of a lot of these homes going forward. Uh, the second thing, of course, is Google Home. Right? It's, the, it's, our, it's our pretty little baby. Uh, it is the assistant bottled up in a single device. Uh, but it's Google and it's personalized to you. And once again, if you think about where the home is going, it's communal, there's a lot of people, and having Google Home and the technologies that we, we release, things like Voice ID, so that we can know who's talking and when they're talking, becomes really cool, and we wanted to showcase that to the pro, the pro market as well. well. Thanks for that. You know, this is a really exciting show really for the industry, the home technology industry, to have Google and Nest together in one venue working collaboratively. Um, explain why, number one, you're making this showcase about getting together and collaborating, and number two, while you're doing it, while you're doing it here at the Cedia Expo, where you have all these smart home professionals attending the event. Well, I think uh, Google and Nest offer really complementary solutions, if you think about it. If you look at Google's history around, you know, search, connectivity, and entertainment, and you combine that across Nest. Uh, products around safety, security, um, it really lends itself to a very complementary solution. And actually our two teams, literally the Nest team has been over at Google for about nine months working collaboratively on aligning roadmaps, aligning product visions, uh, marketing and promotions. So this is really at the, at the pro show like this an expression of us coming together with uh, not only an integrated experience, but really product and promotions, as well as leveraging, again, the pro market that has you know, so many eyes, ears that can 
help distribute and really uh, evangelize our products into a new segment. And this is the right audience to tell that story to because they're actually going into people's homes, hearing what they're trying to get, and also building it for them. So we want to make sure they understand how our products work. Now, Google and Nest, for the most part, they make do-it-yourself products. What's your message to this channel? How do they make money on it? Why do you have such a huge presence here? You know, uh, CDA has been around for many, many years. It's got a legacy of really serving a niche luxury market. Now, granted, I think that spans down in, you know, from maybe a couple thousand dollars all the, all the way up to $100,000 installs. You're absolutely right that our mission is really to create easy to use, at some level, do it, do it yourself products that are easy to use and beautiful and anybody can do that. Now, on an individual pay basis, most consumers can just buy one product and it totally makes sense for them to install it. But when you really start talking about the connectivity of the entire smart home together and the connected home, and you have multiple products, not only Nest, but Google products and then third party products, there is a downstream opportunity. Uh, for this market, for the pro channel, the integrators, to really help address, which is really the mass market. These people still need a do it for me uh, a person to really guide them through, advise them on the, on the right product mix for their particular needs. Even though it's easy to install, they really still need this, this kind of advice. And there's really a, a great opportunity because it's a brand new addressable market that this particular you know, pro audience isn't used to addressing. So it's a pretty exciting time. Uh, we love the feedback and understand how we can shape our products to address uh, the needs of the market. But on the other hand, we believe that our products are suited for mass market. And why not take advantage of it with, through the Pro Channel? So how might they then actually find someone to do it for them? Well, uh, it's great. I know as a Nest Pro, when you sign up, we actually have uh, the ability to do lead generation. So when a Nest customer comes over to our website, they'll fill out a quick form and we actually uh, will produce a lead for their region based on zip code and actually help generate business for them. Not only that, but you're talking about the one of the best two brands in the industry around the connected home space and Google uh, and search. And together that brand recognition can drive and be used by the pro channel to really, because they're known household brands that again can help their businesses and the consumers already have that level of re reliability and respect for the brands that that they could leverage. And so we do a lot of marketing and promotional uh, content specifically for you know pro, pros in that channel. Okay. And Google is just uh, announcing a few partners with Google Assistant embedded inside. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah this is awesome. So I was actually walking over here to uh, come, in, come and speak and hang out with you, Julie. And I went past the, the JBL uh, setup. And I didn't even know they're here. And so if you guys haven't seen, please go to JBL because they're one of our first partners that actually built the Google Assistant into their speaker. So we announced last, last uh, week at IFA there was like seven to, to, to ten, 10 partners or so who now have the Google Assistant built in as a third party. But what's amazing is when you start to see the different SKUs that are come out, they're specific to different homes or uh, different use cases, it's pretty cool. And the way that you can start to do this if you're looking into, hey, well, if I'm, I'm an installer, how would I do this? We have the Assistant SDK. So the Assistant SDK is a way for you to take the Google Assistant and put it into any device. And you can go sign up, and you can even start to download some of the code and start to play with it now. But this is what a lot of our partners are leveraging, the JBLs of the world, in putting the Assistant into many devices, uh, speakers being one that we've launched. And then what specifically does Google Assistant bring to the whole ecosystem? Um, why select Google Assistant? Well, I think like, if you take a step back, you can almost look at voice as a interface, or you should also think about voice as an OS, right? And so if you think about the smart home for a long time, I've been in this space, as long as Mike, uh, but I've been in this space for a while, and the hard part was like understanding what the remote actually did. So no one in the house but one person knew how to work the remote. And then it became the app. No one in the house knew how to work the app other than the one person who set it up. Voices give this communal interface that's pretty awesome, but it also acts as the operating system. And when you start to think about operating systems, you want to bet on operating systems, I believe, that are very robust uh, and have an understanding of how that environment is going to change. So if you think about Google, we went with the, the multi-voice recognition in the home on Google Home. Very hard problem, something that Google's really set up to solve. When you start thinking about security and privacy, 
something that's going to always be important, something that Google has been solving for a long time. Services and apps. Things that are going to be extremely important to home. Google is very much built to solve that. The other key point, I think, is we're deeply integrated with Nest. So now you're taking this amazing software that we're building at this kind of OS level, and we're starting to go really deep on the best products in this market. And we had some of the uh, discussion earlier about what you put in the cloud versus what is processed locally, and talk about some of the trade-offs with uh, the camera, especially the new camera, and doing all that processing that Google actually brings to the table. Yeah, uh, from a Nest perspective, it's interesting because because we are cloud to cloud, because we rely on a lot of processing power in the cloud, there's always this give and take of how much you do on the device itself versus the cloud. Traditionally, our products have uh, been very thin on the device itself, so Nest Protect itself doesn't do a lot of processing. It relies on the cloud, communication, notifications. Uh, same thing with the thermostat. Now, when you get into the camera, our particular solution offers 24-7 constant video storage and retrieval. That's obviously taking up a lot of bandwidth um, in order to do that. Now, to your point, Nest Cam IQ, which we just released, has a much um, more powerful local chip in there. So we're, we're trying to do a lot more local processing to keep kind of the, the, the noise on the network down a little bit, uh, the best we can. Now, you have to understand, though, this is also an offset um, uh, as far as features. So for instance, facial recognition requires both local as well as cloud processing. So as we innovate and introduce these brand new features, there's always going to be kind of this, this back and forth trade-off, if you will. So let's talk about when we get to 30 and 50 and 100 smart devices in the home. How do you guarantee, I guess there's no guarantee, but how do you implement security? And also, once we get to that kind of saturation, what are the possibilities in terms of new interfaces and new ways of interacting with the house? Uh, we knew voice was going to be the first interface because it's the one that made the most sense, but we have built our entire infrastructure to think about ambient computing in general, right? And so when you have a home that has multiple connected nodes, there's a lot of things that you can do in that home that will be awesome. But I think we have to be very careful. And the, the analogy that we talk, we talk about a lot in our uh, team is Google Photos does an amazing job at taking a lot of information and presenting you a suggestion that is really cool, it's really delightful, but you have to engage in it, and if you don't engage in it, it doesn't interrupt your day. So a good example is, you, let's say you take a ton of photos last year this time around Cedia. You may get an alert from Google Photos that says, Oh, remember that? Remember last last year? You had a really good time. You were smiling a lot. You were at a baseball game. And then it's like, and you're in San Diego, and it gives you an album of all those. It doesn't show up in your feed or anything. It just shows you a little uh, a little notification, and you can say, oh, that's cool. Save that album. When we think about the smart home, it's a very similar thought, right? Which is, we start to see these patterns because all these things are connected, but we have to suggest. Because the worst thing you can do in a home, and the fastest way to lose trust with users, is take an action that does something that they didn't expect. And so, more nodes, awesome. The way that we can start to use those nodes are gonna be amazing. I think figuring out the user interfaces that allows a user to say, when I come home, do something, when I'm in this room, do something, or simply pull out their phone and still have a really nice GUI experience. All these modes are gonna be really important. So I guess I'll take the first part of that question was around privacy and security. When you talk about multiple products, your own and third party, in the home, how do you how do you keep it secure and private? Um, this is, you know, it's interesting. One of the reasons why we invested in Thread and Weave was because when we created the thermostat and Nest Protect, and we looked at interconnecting them, we looked at the existing technologies out there. You had Zigbee, Z-Wave, 900, 433, Insteon, you name it, right? At the end of the day, some of these protocols have been around for years, and they weren't intended necessarily for the nuances of the connected home. You know, it's a protocol war. But at the end of the day, it was really important for us to solve it at a fundamental core level to build our entire product line and infrastructure moving forward to the example we just talked about, which is, you know, 20, 30 different nodes, and how do you do that? So security and privacy is really, really important to us, and it has to start with the underlying communications networking protocol and it needs to be encrypted between the device, to the phone, to the cloud, in full circle. So 
that's what we are attempting to do by leveraging Thread and Weave. Um, as far as privacy, we we have a we first of all believe that the home is a sacred haven, right? And we're an invited guest into the home, and unless we we're a bad neighbor, we're going to get kicked out. So if we abuse that, they're going to kick us right out. So we take privacy very, very seriously. Um and, and, and in some regards, Mark, you had mentioned at one point that have, the more nodes you have and the, the smarter nodes you have, potentially that can increase uh, data security and personal security within the smart home. Well, I think, you know, we, we, we're at a show that has tons and tons of brands and, and partners here. And I think there's, there's always the last mile that you're going to another partner. But I, but I think when you start to look at Thread Weave and those devices speaking to one another locally, I think that's, a, that's actually a really good solution, right? Um, where they can have this conversation, you don't have to worry about things getting outside of that space. Um, the other piece that I think is, is really important when it comes to having these more nodes and, and how does that help? Um, one, it helps with the fact that if you want to start to build things like scenes and routines, um, Google can be the central point that's helping build those with the knowledge not having to leave a single provider that you trust, right? And so I think Google has done this in other ecosystems, and I think we can do it uh, very securely here as well. Uh, the, the next one would be, as you start to walk down this path, I think it's really important that personalization and how you identify in the home. So Julie said turn on the lights versus Mark saying turn on the lights. Once again, this is a, a problem that Google has already solved with Google Home. All right, let's wrap this up. We're at CDO 2017 where the audience here is smart home technologists. And why should they do business with Google and Nest? And how specifically do they do that? Yeah, I think from the Google side, I think it's really important if you are a installer, start to think about the experiences that you want to enable in the home. And just simply turning lights on and off is not going to be what users expect. And so from the Google side, we've really approached this as a conversational level. Great, so from Nest perspective, actually a Google Nest perspective, we're here with a better together story, right? We have joined forces, we're sister companies, we have a more seamless integration, and it's only gonna get better. And I think the best thing that we can do as, as, as two companies working together is create the best in class, most compelling consumer experience out there. And if we do that, what we're gonna do is create the mass market demand for our products. That's gonna make integrators be able to just serve up that market demand. And there's a really incredible downstream opportunity for our products because there is still a level of complexity that only integrators and pros can really solve for. So it's a compelling reason to at least look at the platform, look at the opportunities, because at the end of the day, it's about listening to your customer, finding the solution that fits their needs, and if our products do that, then we, again, can be a joint solution that, that they can really leverage and expand their market into the mass market. So, uh, how to sign up? Go over to nest.com slash pro. Uh, you can sign up, we'll review your account, you can become a pro very quickly and easily. We'll supply you with all the documentation, training, get you signed up, provide lead generation, so it's really simple from the Nest side.